Hello Africa fans. Recently, I travelled to the West Country to interview Brian Jackman. Brian has over 30 years experience writing for the Sunday Times and today also writes for the Daily Telegraph. I asked him to share his opinions on conservation in Botswana. Um, thank you very much, Brian, for agreeing to be interviewed today. Um, I'd like to talk to you specifically um, about Botswana, um, if that's possible. Um, so, I mean, you've got a, a great interest in lion conservation and a long history of writing all sorts of things about Africa. Um, where, in your opinion, is the best place in Botswana to see lions in action? To see them in action? Oh, yeah, well, I in think, action. I think probably you've got to go to uh, Duba Plains, I, mm. I suppose. Uh, it's a, place which I've had the most exciting lion encounters. Um, there's huge numbers of buffalo there, and you have this extraordinary setup of basically lions versus buffaloes, and <laughs> produces some pretty exciting uh, game watching. Mm -hmm. And Mombo is another, you know, it's, 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 people have called it the predator capital of the universe. Right. And, uh, you know, and it's an expensive, you know, high-end destination, mm -hmm. but it does have Fantastic yeah, viewing for all all the cats. And whereabouts is um, Duba Plains? Duba Plains is right deep out in the Okavango Delta, but as, as far you know, far in as you can go. Mm. It's, it's a lovely, remote, very wet habitat. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're a lion junkie like me, <laughs> it's a very good place to go. Yeah, sounds great. Then, yeah. I, as a complete contrast, I I also love the central. Kalahari Game Reserve. Right. You know, it's about the size of Arizona, mm. and uh, it's a completely different habitat. Far fewer lions there, but the ones there are, you get, you get good lions here. Right? They are big right. black mane Kalahari. And of course, lions. there's no grass in the way there. Is well, there? no, <laughs> no they're, 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 but you, you, know, you have to work hard to find them. And right. That's part of the fun, I think. And you need to go in the green season. You know, right. when, when it's been raining, you know, half a dozen huge apocalyptic thunderstorms and they transform the Kalahari mm. into this wonderful emerald desert, if you like. Oh, wow. And it's a, it's a stunning time to be there, a mm. stunning place to visit, and it has the, has the bonus of these magnificent lions, if you're lucky enough to track them down places like uh, uh, Deception Pan, Deception Valley. Mm. Um, there's little, little lion hotspots. Really, really good to see. Oh, perfect. And, um, I think um, du Duba Plains is actually, that's on a private conservancy, isn't it, in, in Mombo? The, all, all, they, the, I mean, the whole uh, of the Okavango uh, uh, is it's a kind of jigsaw of, of mm. concessions. Uh, all divided um, up. All divided it, up. Yeah. And when you're in each, each one seems like the size of a small country when you're in it. There's very <laughs> few but it has the benefit of, it's this wonderful uh, scheme that the, the Botswana government has come up. They, they, They've gone to the sort of top end of mm. tourism, and and it has so many benefits. Yeah, I, I mean, what what role do private conservancies play in wildlife conservation in Botswana? Are, are these conservancies, generally, broadly speaking, are they a good thing for the wildlife? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Mm. And I don't really think you can have mass tourism and conservation. The two just they just don't go together. No, in my yeah. And uh, as as you as you mentioned, the Botswana government has had a policy for quite a few years now of uh, pursuing this sort of high end, low volume, expensive. That's exactly politics. that's exactly the road they've gone down, yeah. with, and with terrific results. And so, so actually, you think that that is a, a good model for the long term survival? I do. I, yeah, I believe it. I believe it's it, it's it's made Botswana a, a fantastic destination. Mm and a fantastic refuge for for endangered species. And why do you think that is? Is it just sort of less people visiting, less tourists to disturb the wildlife? Partly. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's a, uh, for a start, Botswana is a, you know, a big country yeah. uh, with a population of, the human population, what is it, 2 million? It's something, yeah, 2.2 um, or something. Very, very low. Yeah. Um, and so there is room for wildlife and room for large numbers of elephants. You know, uh, mm. Elephants need space and not too many people around. And most of those two million people are, are down you know, to the south, around yes. Gaborun. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a win-win situation if it's, if it's wise, you know, wise, the policies are, are conscientiously 
pursue, mm. which they seem to be doing extremely well. Oh, well, that's good news. Okay, so um, what do you think the tourism industry does to help conservation, if anything? Well, it, oh, it, it, you know the same that the, the saying: if it pays, it stays. Mm. I mean, that says it all, and it's that yeah. you know two uh, conscientious um, eco tourism is, mm. is you know as long as it, if it's sustainable, mm. uh, you, you you can just make the whole thing pay, and then there's no reason why why would you want to get rid of the wildlife when it's bringing in, you know bringing in so much money yeah, and exactly. employing so many people, mm. and it, and you can it can just roll on and roll on forever. It's, it's unlike. Mm. Unlike hunting, you have a trophy lion, you shoot it, it's gone, and yes. one guy has the pleasure. Yeah. If that lion is there for several years of its life, attracting yeah. so it's it's used. It's earning like, money in, repeatedly all throughout <laughs> its life. I mean, up yeah. in Kenya years ago, Richard Leakey called his lions the, the great unpaid workers for the <laughs> Kenyan uh, economy. Yeah. He said they're working round the clock for us, they're making mm. millions, which is true. It's the same, of course, happens in Botswana. Mm. Yeah, well, it, yes, it's more exciting than Madame Tussauds or something, it's isn't it, in London? <laughs> um, and thinking about protecting the wildlife in the country, um, obviously there's all sorts of problems with poaching, and it's yeah. a very terrible and serious issue in well throughout Africa. Do you, do you think poaching can ever be beaten, or or at least contained in Botswana, or or are the problems faced? Just too great for a single nation to tackle. No, I think it can be. If the will is there, it can be contained. And at the moment, the will is there. You know, the Botswana Defence Force, which said, I mean, they're, they're brought to bear, mm. um, bear down hard on on poachers. And I think that's mm. definitely a, a, you know, a very positive. Mm. So if, if if the government are serious about conserving wildlife, which they seem to be, mm. and always have done. Um, and I think that the future is probably better for Botswana than many of the other, if not all the other uh, wildlife destination countries in Africa. I think they're, they're, they, in many ways, it holds out the, the best hope. Mm. Well, that's very positive. And uh, of course, in February 2014, Botswana was one of uh, four African nations to, to well, they pledged to honour a 10-year moratorium on the trade of ivory. Um, yes, didn't they? Yes. Which, meaning, of course, that they won't sell any of yes, their yes. ivory stocks um, on on the open market. Do Do you think that's a, a positive move for conservation in Botswana? Because obviously, ivory it's a very valuable commodity, isn't it? But, well, um, yes, um, yes. Um, do you, don't you think I, they'd be better to just destroy all yeah, their ivory stocks? Yeah, I do. I would, I would do what what uh, President Moy did you know, mm -hmm. in Kenya. Is he just burned, burned it all? Yeah. Ivory is what rich people buy and nobody needs. Mm. And that's something that Ian Douglas Hamilton uh, made that comment years ago, and it, st it stands, it's true now as it was then. You don't need ivory. It's just, it's if it's there, it's this terrible temptation mm. that ends up in people dying. And mm. Poachers die, and people are trying to defend the wildlife, they get killed as well. Mm. And for what? It's, you know, you, you, you know Years ago, there was a marvellous film called Bloody Ivory, mm. uh, made about the life of a Kenyan game warden, David Sheldrick, and, and that's what it is, there's, there's blood in its hands. And I think but just before the ivory trade was banned, back at the end of the 1980s, mm. I think it was said that 95% of all ivory in trade was illegal. Really? In other words, it was poached. Mm. So if there's any kind of legal trade, if ever, um, it just it, it's just a, it, it's just it a conduit which disguises the illegal trade going on behind it. Uh, so, yeah, 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 burn it. That's what I'm. I'm really. I feel, so, <laughs> I feel strongly about this. Right. And I've, I've, for years, I've been working at the Sunday Times. <coughs> I reported on these sort of ivory wars, mm. and it's not very nice to see elephants with their faces chopped off no, and no. Their, their tusks taken out. And it's not very nice to have people firing AK-47s at you. Yeah, no, and I'm people sure. <laughs> and people sending. I, there was one occasion in my life when a uh, uh, hit squad was sent to London to bump me off for trying to expose a, 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 an African uh, ivory poaching story. So yeah. there's, there's, yeah, there's, you know, they're very serious a people. Serious, a lot of bad people out there involved in this dirty business. Because I mean, it has a, a, a street value 
which w is worth per kilogram higher, more than cocaine, not not that oh, I yes. have first hand knowledge. And then you move on to <laughs> rhino horns, which are literally worth more, more than their weight in gold. It's, yeah. it's, it's huge, huge incentive. And in a sense, you can't blame the poor little guy in the bush, the poacher who takes all the risks. Mm. Having said that, you know, you have to, you, you really have to bear down on them because. Mm. If these were people breaking into a Bank of London bank vaults mm. and they were caught in the act, they'd, they'd, they'd be run down. The and consequences, so there's no yeah. difference, in my view. Yeah. It's not poaching a pheasant for the pot. You no, have no. sort of romantic views of what poaching is well, all about. It's this is, this is serious. And when the rhino, this wonderful old dinosaur that's walked the earth for millions of years, when mm. it's gone, it's gone. You cannot bring it back. Mm. Exactly. I think that's the greatest crime in the book, is the crime of extinctions. I feel quite mm. passionate, quite strongly about that. Mm. And I'm very pleased to see you know, how well uh, Botswana comes out of this. Um, mm. they, they've gone to huge lengths to, to protect uh, their wildlife. I think, in, you know, going back to lions again, which are, uh, which are endangered now and disappearing from huge areas of their, their um, old you know, continent-wide range, mm. I think Botswana is one of only seven countries in Africa with more than a thousand lions. Really? I think in the, uh, in the Okavango they've got about 1,500 lions. Mm. Um, and are those they, numbers increasing? Or? I, think they're, they're, I think they probably are going to now because Botswana has, has now there's been a hunting ban imposed. Lion right. you, you, know, you, you can't shoot a trophy lion anymore and that was causing huge problems. Mm. Because when you just, even if you shoot one male lion, the repercussions going through all the pride mm. hierarchies, you know, another male lions will come in, they'll kill the cubs. Mm. So it's not just killing one lion, the, the, there's a ripple effect that goes right down through the society. Yeah. So I'm sure that those numbers now, I would like to think they, they will actually increase, which would be tremendous. Mm. Well, that's, that's, that's positive news then. And um, <coughs> on a slightly different tack, um, I understand Namibia has mooted plans to actually dam the Okavango River to the north of Botswana, yeah, where, where the yeah. river enters the country. Yes. Um, what, what's your take on the impact on both tourism and the country more widely that, that the damming of, of the Okavango River might have on the country were that project to go ahead? Well, I, it's anything that would threaten the future and stability of the Okavango Delta would be a colossal mm. disaster in my view. Well, it's, a, it's really a, a unique habitat. Isn't it, it is unique. Mm. What is it? 10,000 square miles, biggest oasis in Africa. Mm. This wonderful area of reed beds, you know, uh, plains, lagoons, yeah. waterways, river and forests, absolutely stunning and, and heaving with, with wildlife of mm. all kinds. So, yes, yeah. fishing owls and you know, <laughs> you know, the, oh, God, it's a, yeah, it, it red would, lecher. Really, it would probably have a, a pretty detrimental effect on all of that, wouldn't it? Because it would unbalance sort of the whole ecosystem, presumably, because presumably there'd be less water flowing in. Well, I mean, yes, so it's bound, bound, to, bound to affect it. Yeah. Mm. And it is a, it is a, I, I mean, one of these world heritage, it's, a, it's part of, it, it belongs to the world, it's, it's mm. a priceless thing hang on to it at all costs. Yeah. And the value to Botswana, you know, as 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 may happen, as as wildlife and wild places become increasingly rare, increasingly hard to find. As we spread then, across the globe. <laughs> then, then the places that survive rather like rare and wonderful antiques whose value has increased. Mm. So it by its, its rarity, scarcity value alone, an, an area like the Okavango will become more and more valuable and bring in more, you know, it'll be worth more to mm. Botswana to keep it as pristine as, as it is now. Yeah. So it's very important that they do that. Mm. And on that note, do you think that the, the natural environment and the wildlife of Botswana has a positive future? Um, say in 15 years' time, what sort of state do you think the country's wildlife will be in? I think that whatever happens across the rest of Africa, Botswana probably has the, holds out the greatest hope for the wildlife of the continent. Really? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 well, that's, that would be my that's view. very positive yeah, indeed, yeah. then. Okay. But having said that, I mean, there's not, that's not, doesn't mean to say that it's risk-free and mm. that 
people are not going to take it for granted or that would not have to fight to maintain the status quo. Mm -hmm. They've got to, you know, you've got to put your shoulder to the wheel and fight for every last inch. It's so precious. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, thank you very much for your time. Brother Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank you very much. much. <laughs> thank you.